Priya, I'm going to make you my spicy plum chicken. It's delicious, nice and sweet, glazed in the oven. Oh. Fantastic. Now, we've got to start with some sweet stuff. Uh, you might want to turn away for this bit. <laughs> turn away. Avert your eyes. Brown sugar in there. And see that brown sugar just falls apart. And you've gone straight to the ginger Ooh. and garlic. You've read my recipe, haven't you? <laughs> oh, there we go. I've read your mind, You've read my mind because you know that it's going to go in there, don't I you? I do. Now, I've got some honey in there as well. So about a tablespoon of honey in there. Probably a little bit more if you like it sweeter. Put some more in. Now, we do like some spice. So chilli in there. About a tablespoon of chilli goes into that. And some gogajang, which is a Korean paste, which I love using. You can get it at most supermarkets now. It's rice fermented mm. with chilli and spices. Wow. It's really, really good. Lovely. Okay, in that goes. That's about two or three tablespoons of that, or maybe a quarter of a cup. Now, I'm using these preserved plums. And you can get these in any supermarket, tin plums, fresh plums, whatever plums you want. These are really nice. These are small ones. There's a little bit of syrup in there. Garlic and ginger straight on top of that. I'm using some rice vinegar, and that's for a bit of sharpness. So a little bit of that in there, about two tablespoons of that. Now, this is the good part. This is where you've got some soy sauce, and I'm using dark soy. If you want some real strong umami flavour, mm, dark soy dark is perfect. Soy. I love this about your dishes because you combine the sweet, the spicy, the salty so beautifully. Everything together. You know, he just mixes everything and it always tastes good. Exactly. And yeah. you know how you like to be really competitive about things? No. Well, this is going to be a winner of a dish. I'm using plum sauce and it's really, really okay. thick. Okay. And look at that. Beautiful. It's going to make it even plummier yes. and fruitier, which is what it's all about. About two tablespoons of that is perfect. Now, I'll just pop this over here. And if you can just mash it up with a fork gently. and bring it all together mm. gently. Yes, so it's I got can. this beautiful, delicate marinade oh, ready to go. The smell's coming out of here. This is lovely. It's fantastic, isn't mm. it? All right, here is the chicken. Beautiful chicken ready to go. And I'm going to prepare it to go into the oven. What I like to do is take the little wing tips off like that and you just open the wing tip up and look for the little joint, the little piece in the middle there, mm. and just run the knife through there. And it goes through that joint and the little tips come off easily. I do take the tips off because in the oven, they will burn on the end. So They're crunchy and delicious. I know, I know. But what I do is I save these little bits and pieces and make a stock. chicken stock. Exactly. Yeah. Freeze it all up. Now, you'll see with the backbone there, you've got the spine that runs down the middle there. I like to cut on either side of that spine there mm. and remove it. Of course, your butcher will do this for you if you want to, but I reckon why let the butcher have all the fun when you can do it yourself? This is a good skill to learn. I personally hope Will is watching at home because I always say cut the chicken like Richo does, but <laughs> it's, it's a very good skill. And out comes the spine. You reckon I could have been a surgeon? You could have. You and you and Willie, this is what you bond over, isn't it? Exactly. Take <laughs> things apart nice and easily. And the next bit, I just crack it through there and then flatten it down like that. Now, you'll see there's a rib cage here and I just put uh -huh. my little knife under there and remove the rib cage because okay. these little bones are, are like fine little bones and they sort of come apart. You can leave them in if you want, but I like to take them out. It doesn't really matter. I can take it out really, really easily. Now, once you've got this, you just turn it over and flatten it out and it's ready to go. Beautiful. So you've mixed that marinade together beautifully. Now, this is the messy part. You can just grab it by the breasts here or the legs, whatever you want to do. And what I want to do is just pop it into the mm. marinade like this and make sure it's really, really well covered. Make sure you get the marinade into all these little bits here. You can use a spoon, but I find by using your hands, you can make sure it's all coated really Any well. Any opportunity. I feel like if you could use a spoon or tongs, Richo <laughs> will choose to use his hands, and I love that about you. Can I ask, if people are looking at this going a bit afraid of a whole chicken, you could do chicken bits, you could do thighs or breasts or something else in this marinade? Exactly. Thighs yeah. would be great, Mary Lance would be great, they'd be perfect to do, but there's nothing better than a whole chicken. Nothing scary. If you can grab that tray yes. there. Now, you want to make sure the marinade's in here and all into the little bits and pieces. And for me, it's much easier with the hands. You can just massage it in there. Now, I'll grab this out like mm. this. I'll step away. Pop it onto the yes. tray. Yes, it is a little bit messy. Now, this bit here, I'll just put this marinade over the top of it. And then what I like to do is keep a little bit of the marinade for the air just before it comes out of the oven. I'll brush a little bit of it on the top there and that'll make sure it glazes beautifully. Now, I've preheated the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. I want the chicken to glaze beautifully mm. while it cooks and I don't want it to overcook or go black. So this will go into the oven about 30 to 40 minutes and it'll be cooked beautifully.
There we go. It looks glazed beautifully, doesn't it? It's wonderful. And the smells coming from this are just glorious. They are, aren't they? Mm. Now, I'm going to pick it up like this and just pop it straight onto the plate there. That's why I like using a fork. You didn't even know I did that, did you? Lovely. All, right. All these special chef tips. I love it. Exactly. And you can see I've got the baking paper on the bottom. That's a great idea because it makes the tray a hell of a lot easier to clean afterwards. Oh, the smell is so good, Richo. I'm exactly. kind of salivating a little bit. And we pop all of that sauce over the top of it. And then, of course, we need a little bit of garnish to make it look nice and pretty. You could just imagine putting this down in the middle of the table in front of everyone. There we go. It looks fantastic. It does. All Let's right. have a taste. We should. Now, I'm just going to take this little winglet off here. To me, this is the best part of the whole. You want that? Yeah, I do. Oh, I love the wing. This, this is a secret. Oh. Yeah. Take that off and have mm. a little taste of that. To me, that's the, that tells you what, what it's all about. Sticky fingers already, so we mm. know it's going to be delicious. Mm. That is honestly... Glorious. The flavours in that are absolutely glorious. I would probably reduce the amount of sugar. I love this recipe. I'd probably leave the brown sugar out, maybe add some miso paste or something to add Beautiful. some extra flavour. That would be a lot more savoury. It would, right. but I quite like that. That's what my palate tends to like. But this is very yummy. Some veggies on the side, some broccoli, blanched, whatever you like. Will you make some veggies and I'll just keep eating this? Perfect. Perfect.